But before we can keep going on the building, we had to obtain a few permits. Um, first was the roadside development permit from the province. Because we are on a, a highway, we are considered to be interrupting the flow of traffic, all of one car every three to four hours. <laughs> so we had to get permission from the, from the province in order to develop beside the highway. Next came the development permit from the county, which allowed us to turn an empty field into a residential pro property. Um, then we found out that we needed new home warranty, which typically costs several thousand dollars. I heard like 10,000. Oh, it can be oh. upwards of 20. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's just general. Um, but we were able to obtain a self build. Um, so basically we have to own the property for a minimum of 10 years, which is how long the warranty lasts in Alberta. And basically, if anything goes wrong, we just have to fix ourselves, which we would have to do anyways. So so we can't go after the builder for a warranty. Um, well, I can go after you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we needed an actual building permit, which pertained to the foundation, the stairs, all the stuff that was actually outside of the building. Because the house itself has a CSA. But that was, like, we had to go through the county to figure out that we could get w away with a CSA. Yes. It was a lot of back and forth, a lot of emails of going, will you accept this? No, we need this. No, we need that. Until we finally landed on, this is what we need. That was like a month, month and a half worth of emails back oh, yeah. and forth. Lots of phone calls. And of course, they're trying to do this all in lockdown. Um, otherwise I would have just gone down to the county office and talked to them, but unfortunately that wasn't an option this year. Um, after we knew that we could put the building on there, we also had to obtain our electrical permit for the connection, um, a septic permit, private, private sewage permit is what they call it, in order to put our septic system in. And then we also required a plumbing permit for in between the CSA approved fixtures and the private sewage. You would think those would be combined, but apparently not. All like 20 feet of pipe. Oh yeah. Um, and then of course the gas permit for our propane line. And then when we went to actually move the house onto the property, we needed oversized load permits and road permits for the the trucker that was moving it because we had to build it substantially in the shop in order to obtain our CSA certification. It's okay for a tractor that's 16 feet wide, but for a house, you need permits. Everything needs permits. So how was the pro permit process? Like I know you did a lot of it while I was working and trying to get some other stuff done. Um, once we figured out how to treat the house, the county was a little bit easier going. And in the end, they ended up basically treating it like a mobile home. Mm -hmm. And that made it a bit easier. But because we're the first Seacan home in the county, they were very confused <laughs> at first. It was a lot of emailing and trying to describe things, but... Um, the biggest issue we came across was that they wanted us to have a CSA in order to get the development and building permit. But I couldn't get CSA until we were substantially complete. And I couldn't start the build without knowing that we could get the development and building permits. But I couldn't get those without CSA. <laughs> so it was just this round robin of trying to get government officials to understand what I was doing what I was trying to say. So how did you get past all that? Well, I ended up being able to speak directly to the inspectors and laid out what we were wanting to do. And they were able to help me out with the administration staff because ultimately the inspectors have the final say. 
Mm -hmm. And they all thought that the project was super cool sounding. So we were able to get tentative approval based on us obtaining our CSA at a later date. Okay. And the reason I was so adamant about getting the approval from the county was we were going to have to set, have to spend a substantial amount of money before we could even get to the CSA stage. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to get there only to have the county turn around and say no. And we sure wouldn't want that. So pretty much for the next four to six weeks, we waited eagerly to hear back from the county. And in the meantime, we just enjoyed the time we spent at our future homestead with our pups and dreaming of the future.